Welcome to the AP Physics video lecture on kinematics. Here we're going to cover uniform motion. To, some, to clarify in terms of the vector symbol, technically the variable of speed is considered to be the V. The variable for velocity would be that vector on top of V. In any of your homeworks or tests, you don't need to be so formal. You could actually leave the arrow on top of, um, that is on top of the V when it's velocity. In fact, I will often do this when solving problems in class and in the presentations. In addition, some vector quantities are often, um, often conserved into a scalar quantity in order to solve certain mathematical processes. If we do do that, I want you to still be aware that even if the error is omitted, it is very important for you to still know whether it is a scalar or a vector quality. All right, so let's look at your final and initial conditions. Okay, sometimes you can see it with a subscript I, which is on bottom, like in this case. Okay. An alternate way to see that is with B, the subscript of zero. So T zero, um, X zero, or V zero. The zero is actually referred to something called not, means nothing. So you could actually see it like this. Uh, T initial t0 or t0 which is the same thing as x initial x0 or x0 and so on and so on okay these two are interchangeable the ap physics people actually have no reference uh to which one you will use okay so you could pick either one but understand that they're the same okay final and initial conditions okay final condition can be seen as with the subscript f or sometimes you can see it like this without the subscript you might also see it with a one so ap central seems to favor the zero subscript for initial condition and no subscript for the final condition so a easier a good way to look at it is that if you want one to memorize memorize using this format the zero format and as the initial and this as the final okay that is the best way but in my class, I would use it interchangeably. Hopefully you understand. The delta symbol means change. Delta T is your change in time. Delta X is the change in the X position. Change is always mathematically solved this way. Final minus initial. So you might see it like this. TF minus TI or T minus T naught. Delta X, you could have seen it like this. XF minus XI or X minus X naught. These are your different ways. All right. So making sure that we understand the different notations. Let's look at elapsed time and displacement here. So Delta T can be um, seen as T minus T naught. Um, that we usually start, but t naught is normally zero because we start our time at zero. If we ever do that, you're going to see that your delta t is really just t. Understand that your elapsed time or how much time has changed is really equal to the final time. That's why you might see delta t equals to t a lot. You might also see that delta x is equal to x minus x naught, but Originally, we know that x0 is equal to 0. So, in theory, delta x should be equal to x. So, that's only at these specific conditions, and which is our most common one. Make sure you're careful. While mathematically equals these letters represent different qualities, many people simplify the equation by deleting the delta symbol. And AP... Uh, the AP central test uh, does not seem to care if you do, as long as it is clear that you understand which variable you are solving for. Dropping the delta symbol is not wise in every single case and includes it in some problems can be a advantage. So it depends on the way you do it. Okay, so hopefully you see the clarification now on why certain symbols are the way they are. Here's the objective for the lesson. Speed versus velocity. So speed, we see this as a scalar, it's magnitude. Speed is the rate that distance is traveled. In kinematics, 
divide the starting variable, which is the distance, by your elapsed time, which is delta t. Velocity, it is our magnitude and direction. So we see if it's going to the right or to the left. So in this case, you could see that de uh, vector v is equal to 50 meters per second in the negative direction. This means it is going 50 meters to the left. Velocity is the rate of displacement. That's why it's delta x. Please note, a vector can change in its scalar quantity for a mathematically purpose by moving the sign or direction in front of the magnitude. So in this case, v is equal to 50 meters per second in the negative x direction. You could write it like this. Most commonly, we, write, we just write it as vx, which is the velocity in the x direction. We just put the negative in front of it. Okay, this is more common and what you have to understand. Okay, so positive direction, just write the number. Negative, if it's in the opposite direction, just put a negative in it. So let's look at uniform motion. Motion can be represented in several ways. This is a motion diagram. Each dot represents a um, particular um, time. And here it starts at zero seconds then no zero then it goes to five meters 10 meters 15 meters the change here is five meters sometimes you see it as in a table so uh, t seconds this is your time x is your distance in the x direction delta x refers to the change in the x direction and v refers to your velocity or the change in the x direction Understand that a positive position, this is a position versus time graph. Time is always your independent variable, so it is on bottom. And your dependent variable here is your position. Notice that at zero, zero, it starts at zero, zero. At one second, it is at five meters. At two seconds, it's at 10 meters, and so on and so forth. Now, if we grab the velocity chart, okay, it looks like this. At zero, zero, the velocity is at five meters per second because that is the change in the x direction. Two seconds, also, the change is still five meters per second. That is why it is constant here. So I would like you to see that the slope here is represented by this. The slope of the position versus time graph actually gives you the velocity. So the slope here is how much it is changing. The rise or your delta x is your um, is the change in the position versus the change in time. So you can see that the slope of the position graph gives you what the velocity is. You should see it right here. The slope of the position versus time is velocity because notice that the slope here is five meters per one second, five meters per one second, five meters per one second, five meters per one second. Right here, and the slope is still all five. That is why it is flat because the velocity is the same. So now let's take a look at this. Another aspect of the graph is the area bounded by the function of the x axis. So for you who take calc, this is very important. So let's look at the area under this curve here. Let's examine the area. We know the area of this. It looks like a rectangle, okay? The area is just length times height or base times height, however you want to do it. In this case, your time would be your base and your height would be your velocity so it can just be v times t velocity times time that would get you the area here what is the area here so this is eight times five which is what 40 ha huh, that is interesting the area that we found here was 40 that area of the velocity versus time graph is actually the displacement so the area under the velocity graph gives us the total distance traveled. 
So this is ways to look at the um, uniform motion. An object is going to the right and it's moving to the right. So we can see certain things that are happening. So in this case, if it's moving to the right and going to the right, uh, it is increasing in the positive direction. And the, and the slope of this is constant. So therefore, the velocity here is positive and it's flat. Likewise, if the object is going to the right and it is moving to the left, it should look like this, right? The direction is decreasing and, it go, and it's going all the way to zero. In this case, the slope here is negative, but it is constantly negative. So it's flat here on the negative value. If you would like to see what it means in this case, it says to the origin, so let me show you. Here it says that it is, the object is to the right of the origin, so it's right here, and it moves left, okay? This is what it means. You see how the distance goes from, let's say, 10 meters, and it goes all the way to zero, 10 to zero. Does that make sense? And the slope here could be, like, say, negative two meters per second. So this would be two meters per second, good? Next, the object is to the left of the origin and is moving to the left. So here it is. Oops, that's a horrible graph. So it's here. Let's say it's at negative 10 and it moves to the left. So it keeps getting more negative. So it goes to like negative 20 and it keeps going. So in this case, it would be like this. Okay, this is zero and it goes all the way to, let's say, negative 20. What is the slope here? Well, the slope here, we can just say it's still negative 2 meters per second. So it's still flat here at 2 meters per second, at negative 2 meters per second, I'm sorry. What about if the object is to the left of the origin, which is right here, to the left of the origin, but it moves to the right. So it starts here at negative 10, and it goes all the way to zero. So looks like this it starts here at negative 10 and it goes all the way to zero the slope here could be what the slope here can be two meters per second so it should be a flat line here at two meters per second let's look at what average velocity is velocity when motion is not uniform it's not uniform because this is nonlinear. So determine the average velocity from t equals to zero, which is right here, to t equals to 10 seconds, which is right there. So from the graph, average velocity is actually the slope of the straight line connecting the initial condition, which is right here, initial, to its final condition. So if we do the slope here, it would be equals to this, okay? The point here, it is 40 comma 10, and here would be 10, 0, 10. So here you would say the slope here would be 3 uh, right here. The slope here would be 30 over 10. So 30 um, meters over 10 seconds. If you reduce it, it becomes 3 meters per second. Mathematically, if we use the, equa uh, the equation, it's the same thing. This is starting from your initial to your final. Now, that is average. This is average. This is the slope. Remember, this is the slope from the initial to the final condition. Now, let's look at instantaneous. Instantaneous can be think about at a instance. If you're taking AP Calc, please pay attention to this. This is very important. Determine the instantaneous velocity when t equals to 4 seconds. So right here, it's looking for its velocity. At this point, from the graph, we see that we could draw this um, tangent line. This tangent line represents this exact moment, which is 4 seconds. Now you could actually um, you could do the calculation. 
at this moment, the vo um, the point is um, they they have this as y two minus y one, and this is x two minus x one. Okay. So here they got 3.33. So at this moment, if they do this calculation, 35, okay, 35 minus 2 and 10 minus 0, okay? You still get 3.33 seconds, which is close to the other one, okay? Now, sketching the tangent line is an approximation. So the question is, how can we improve this? The average was 3. The approximation was 3.33. So we actually invent something mathematically, okay, which requires calculus. And in this class, it's algebra-based, but I want to still show you this so you can get a better understanding of it. There is something called a, this is called a derivative right or a differential equation okay you would say that velocity is a derivative of position so d stands for derivative and this is position and this is the derivative respect to time if you solve for the derivative it returns actually the velocity here so if you actually at this moment if you do the derivative Okay, you will actually know it's instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is at this, you're looking for the slope. At this point, you're, you're able to get the slope. So now the question is, how do you get that? Okay, and remember, this is before, this is how we find slope, right? A change in, in this big line. So what we do mathematically is that we actually shrink it. So the slope was super big, right, from here to here, and we keep and we keep the slope was your delta x over delta t, correct? All we have to do is do you see how the delta time is right here? This delta t goes to somewhere as a zero. So it goes towards zero. As it goes towards zero, this goes towards the zero, which gives us a better approximation of your change in your positioning. Okay, so that's where the idea comes from. Instantaneous velocity is referred to the derivative at the exact location. Now, you want to also take a look at uh, the displacement. So we're going to look at the area under the curve. Again, this is beyond the scope of this class, but I still want to give you a better understanding of it. So this is the velocity. And we know that the area under the curve here gives us the distance. The area under the curve, this is called an integral. The integral in its basic form gives us the area under the curve. If we get the area, this is the area under the velocity versus time curve, you will get your positioning. Okay. This just gives you a better representation of what we did earlier of this and this okay we saw that to go from here to here we found the slope right to go from velocity to position we got the area likewise you can go from position to velocity by get by doing the derivative and you can go from velocity to area by doing the integral okay in the calculus sense All right there you go